This is Grand Theft Auto in 1989, playable only on the Commodore 6 with only 1.5 million players. This is the story of how GTA became one of the best video game series of all time. The second GTA video game was slightly different to the rest, you could only play it in an arcade. It was small so it got no official rating. For six years, GTA game devs had been developing what they thought would be a masterpiece, Grand Theft Auto Game Boy Edition. The fuss of it being very similar to Pokemon, it was actually slammed by critics. Then came the launch of the first full GTA game, Grand Theft Auto 1. The official PlayStation magazine praised it as one of the most original yet controversial releases on the platform. As part of the 2D gaming universe at this time, it featured a bird's eye camera view. The player got these missions through phone calls and these missions would get you to points that would help you complete levels. These points were also used as currency to buy items in the game. There were two more games developed, GTA London 1969 and London 1961 both released in 1999, with the same dynamics as the first one. So, right after these two games, Grand Theft Auto 2 was released in 1999. The gameplay was very similar to its predecessor, 2D, bird view camera and many missions. If you played the PC version back in the day, you could choose from noon and dusk version and there was an improvement in graphics. It was available on PlayStation, Dreamcast, PC and Game Boy Color. And now we're slowly entering the 3D universe with Grand Theft Auto 3, released in 2001. It introduced the third person POV. Now players can see an open world through the innovative over shoulder camera. Story wise, we're also going back to Liberty City, first introduced in GTA 1. We're playing as Claude. During a bank robbery, Claude is shot by his girlfriend and he got arrested by the police and sentenced to be in jail. As he and another prisoner were transferred, both of them escape and get in the way of a crime boss. As Claude is quenching his thirst for revenge, his want level increases, which can make you being chased by policemen or avoid getting captured. Following up on the 3D universe, now we are presenting Grand Theft Auto Vice City, released in 2002. This is the sixth full game in the franchise, and now we are in a city based in Miami. Here we're playing as Tommy Vassetti, a mafia hitman who after a deal has gone wrong, he's looking out for some revenge. The players are constantly completing main and side missions, unlocking playable areas. Now, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was, and still is, one of the most important titles of the saga. Released in 2004, it has the same graphics as the previous titles of the 3D universe. We're now playing as CJ, or Carl Johnson, framed with charges of murder by dirty cops. To keep him on the streets, CJ has to complete certain missions. So what's different? Well, now we can actually fully roleplay as CJ, by personalising his appearance, exercising and more. During the time GTA 4 was in development, Rockstar Studios released a couple of packs to expand the story of the universe. Those stories are Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories where we're playing as Tony Kipriani. This game was released in 2005 and the mission we must complete is making Tony the right hand of the Mafia boss. The following year Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories was released and now he is looking to create an empire in Vice City. These stories set as a preamble for the HD universe where Grand Theft Auto 4 is the leading man. Released in 2008, this platform increased the gameplay and rendered graphics into a more realistic and detailed level. We're now playing as Nico Bellic, an immigrant with big dreams who arrived at Liberty City. Here you can travel the city in different vehicles and during combat you can use several weapons. It's also the introduction for the first person mode, which can be used while driving cars. It also has a multiplayer mode up to 32 players. This game had two exclusive DLC contents called The Lost and Damned and The Ballad of Gay Tony, which expanded the story even more. Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars has a very different presentation from the previous games in the series, by partially resembling the first Grand Theft Auto titles. 
Instead of a ground level view behind the protagonist or a top down perspective, Chinatown Wars uses a fully rotatable camera angled down at the action. Unlike Grand Theft Auto 4, the player can disable as many police cars as possible to escape the police instead of leaving a wanted zone. The more stars the player has, the more police they have to take out for each level. For example, for a 6 star level, they have to take out 6 police cars to get down to a 5 star wanted level, and so on. There is also a dealing subplot which allows players to sell contraband around the city. Players can profit by recognising market conditions and demands based on geography and plying their wares accordingly. CCTV cameras work as the game's secret packages, destroyed by throwing a Molotov cocktail bottle or a grenade. This also decreases the chances of being caught while making an illegal exchange. This game was made mostly for PSP, iPhone, Android and Nintendo DS, which explains its top-down perspective. In 2013, Grand Theft Auto V was released, and it's the most graphically advanced game so far in the saga. It still uses Rage Graphics Engine, and it does a great job at simulating traffic, several types of weather, vehicles and more. It also has the option of having first or third person camera, and you can unlock the map by progressing your missions. Each of them has a different set of skills that help you improve several experience points. Once you reach enough progress, you can start changing characters. This was one of the most successful titles of the saga, selling over 800 million US dollies just on its first day. It's the third most popular game of all time, selling over 110 million copies as of 2020. In late 2013, the online mode was released, increasing its popularity even more. You can now use your money to acquire a luxury apartment, a garage of expensive cars and a fleet of planes. The experience was so detailed, you could even get insurance for your cars and a mechanic to deliver them to you. At first, you could only play a handful of mini-games with other people, including rock, paper, scissors, car races and team deathmatch, but Grand Theft Auto Online allowed people to make their own custom games. I remember having a fist fight on a cargo container floating in the sky with players, and whoever was the last person standing on the crate would win. Rumours have it they got their inspiration from Mr Beast. There were even extreme car stunt races in the sky that were so hard, if you blinked at the wrong moment, you'd have to restart. And now we're here. It's 2020 and GTA has one of the most dedicated gaming fan bases around. Grand Theft Auto 6 is set to come out within the next year. Rockstar have already teased GTA 6 and what you're seeing here is supposedly pre-alpha gameplay that was leaked on Reddit. I'm not 100% sure that this is actual confirmed GTA 6 gameplay, but it looks pretty legit to me, and even if it's not, we can expect GTA 6 to look very similar to this. There's been many leaks on Reddit and 4chan, where users have also claimed that they've gone into the GTA 5's DLC game files and found some extra information regarding Grand Theft Auto 6. This lines up with the fact that there was an advertisement at the Miami Super Bowl that hinted at GTA 6 by copying the usual GTA cover design. At first, I didn't really want to share all this information as I didn't know the validity of all this info, but after doing a little bit more research on this leaked info, I realised I'd tell you guys. Because this video is about the evolution of Grand Theft Auto, and I feel like I should tell you everything on the internet that I can find on GTA 6. But I just want to make you guys aware that this is just a leak and not 100% confirmed by Rockstar. On top of the game being set in Miami, other links have said that in this GTA, we will be able to interact with every single player in the city, with multiple options when talking to civilians. And other leaks have shown that every single skyscraper and building will be fully accessible to the player, allowing a player to rob random people's houses and apartments. Other rumours have said that you can be at home watching basketball or football on TV in Grand Theft Auto 6 and then go to the stadium and cause chaos on live TV whilst the players are actually playing. Like this video right now for a week of good luck. Don't risk it, just try it now. Press like and you'll get the most insane week of good luck ever. Also, if you did enjoy this content and you want to subscribe, I will be doing more of these types of videos in the future. Anyway, subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.